Man, we're back at the Cat House live unveiling. I mean, this is the big pre-party, and we got Nuno Betancourt from Extreme. Look at that, man. The headliners on the bill. I never, I never thought uh, you'd have Extreme and Cat House or Ricky Rackman in the same sentence. I always thought he hated us. I know. So you guys, you guys missed it back then because you're the East Coast band. We had our East Coast scene. We had our East Coast scene. We had our, 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 our bands going on there. And what was uh, the first time you came to Hollywood? Where'd you, where'd you play? Well, I mean, I think the first time we came over is we we uh, got signed by a label out here, A&M Records. Great A&M Records, Sunset and La Brea. Yeah, and so coming out here, that was our first experience to meet them and hang out. And then, uh, you know, we recorded porn graffiti out here. And that's really when we tapped into West Coast in L.A. And Where was the studio? Yeah, the studio was Scream. It was it was, it was was in the Valley. Ventura. Uh, Ventura. And, uh, but we had, like, Sebastian Bach dropping in every, every other night. You couldn't get rid of him. He was crazy. And I remember going obviously you know coming here to the rainbow going to cat house just meeting all you know I, you know I remember going to the cat house when I did just like after the studio and standing next I was with Sebastian and then there was Axel and Axel was like showing us new lyrics that he just wrote and what do you think you know like that that's what it was like back then it was just like it was like a community you know what I mean you felt like as big as LA was it felt small because you felt like you were in a in a, in a, in a hometown in, in, in a bizarre way even even as even as an East Coast guy you still felt like it was a bit of a home for you you know no doubt Very kindred cool. spirits all you guys were yeah. out there to you know make a movement which yeah. you did yeah you remember the first time you saw yourself on MTV what was that like absolutely well it, it, I, it, I believe it was headbangers ball I think it might have been Ricky that introduced the video he probably hated it but he introduced it <laughs> but uh yeah it was a song called Kid Ego that we had it was the first thing and uh it was amazing it was incredible incredible yeah. incredible feeling kind of changed your life in a bit right there your stock went up and yeah you know it, it's interesting increased. But you know, look, you go out and you work. You go out and you work. It did, it wasn't there was nothing overnight about uh, the first album. You go out and you know, Headbangers Ball supports you. You go out and you tour with, I mean, doing tours with Dangerous Toys. Saigon Kick was on a tour with us. We did stuff with uh, we did stuff with Cinderella with us, uh, Cinderella, David Lee Roth. I mean. It's, ama tour. it's amazing to see this, you know, Trickster, all those guys. We did gigs with all these bands. It's yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some, so much of our favorite music comes from the 70s and the 80s, you know, and I'm sure you were influenced by so many of those great 70s bands that are still some of the top touring, top-selling acts in the world, you know. Of course, MTV changed things a little bit, you know, that now there was a visual side to the music. But what, was, what were your favorite artists from the 70s? Who really laid the roots for ex you and Extreme? Well, you know, it's interesting to call them a 70s band, but I think I don't think any of this shit would be going on in L.A. without without Van Halen. Oh, yeah. I mean, Roth is responsible probably for all the great and bad singers that came out of L.A. <laughs> you know, and performers. I mean, those guys changed the game. Eddie changed the way we all played. Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you have to, you know, there's no Van Halen without Zeppelin and Sabbath oh, and sure. Queen and all the bands we grew up. Cycle. But really, this specific this specific taste, you know, uh, it, it, those guys shocked the world with yeah. with Van Halen one. It changed everything, man. Everything. I mean, I remember when they were opening for Black Sabbath. It was like the changing of the guard. Yeah. Sabbath was drudgery and yeah. all coked out, and Van Halen hit the hit the stage like a rocket. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, uh, and they're still doing it. You know, granted, we'd all. Wish Michael was there. Love Wolf, but we all wish Michael was there because he belongs there, and it would be great to see the original lineup before before they before they wrap it up. Yeah. But uh, but uh, they're still doing it, man. You still know, doing it's, it. It's it's there one form or another, and of course your yeah. cohort, Gary, had his run. Oh, that's right. I always forget. What, what was about the call when he said, "Hey, dude, I'm in Van Halen." That was crazy, man. I was happy for him. I was I laughed at first because. We, we, we uh, me and Pat, our bass player, we used to play a lot of Van Halen at Soundcheck. And Gary would walk off stage when we played it because he didn't know a lot of it. He grew up on The Who. You know, he grew up on, on Zeppelin Queen. And we, you know, we would do all the Van Halen stuff, and he just didn't know a lot of the repertoire. He wasn't a VH guy, and that's probably why they, they wanted him because he was, you know, he wasn't that ego maniac, you know. And look, uh, we, you know, it, it was interesting when he called me. I was like, that's amazing, man. I mean, you know. You're going. Uh, you're going from me to the real to the real deal. Right. <laughs> kind of mind-boggling the thought of taking Ross spot. Yeah. Yeah. It's look. It's that's a tough spot. I don't give a shit who you are. Sammy did an amazing job with it, and I love Sammy. But Roth is always the old Van Halen is always the old Van Halen. You know yeah, what I mean? It's the original. Yeah. No doubt. Now I know we can't wait for your set here, but you're also playing with Rihanna. What's that like? Because a lot of people, you know, they know the pop princess, but. They don't know that Rihanna rocks, man. That show and the band is smoking. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, you know, they, it's interesting because uh, 
when they first reached out to me to do that, I was like, why? Because it didn't have a lot of guitar. And, uh, and they said, well, that's why. You know, she wants it to be edgy. She knew it. So I go, I get to play what I do, same rig, everything, and I get to ruin every one of her songs. <laughs> I'm like, great, let's do it. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was amazing. And the band is incredible. You know, you got, you got musicians, a drummer that plays with Stevie Wonder, and bass player is incredible, Eric Smith, and, and all, these, all these guys that are legends in their own, like, you know, uh, in, in their own instrument. So it was pretty rocking, and I had a lot of fun. You know, I'm not doing it this year because I want to focus on what we're doing here, get back to the rock and roll a bit. But uh, it was amazing. She's she's a she's a good boss to have sure. and to look at. <laughs> and, and just like Monty Pittman, you know, with Madonna, man, adding that metal edge. That's right. That's right. That's right. Style. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Nuno, what advice do you give to the young players today? Because the business is like upside down, completely changed around, but. The facts remains. You got to be a great player. You got to have great songs. You got to bring it live. What advice do you give to the younger generation? Look, I think I think it's a tough it's a tough period for up and coming kids, you know, and stuff because, you know, there was an element of the past that made this that made what we're doing hard to reach. Yeah. And as great as the filters, yeah, as great as the internet is great, it brought the world so into your living room that the mystery, a lot of the mystery went away. It's like you want to travel to Egypt, all right, I'll travel to Egypt online, and you get to see everything. You want to go backstage these days, you want to do whatever, I'll see it online. And we used to go, I used to go to the Boston Garden and watch, and I remember watching Ozzy and just going, I can't wait. What is it like back there? How do we get back there? There wasn't a lot of information. There wasn't a lot of Instagram. There wasn't a lot of them us following artists around. So what happens is. You, you used to go back in your basement and go back and work because you needed to get in there. You had to you had to be extra special to get in there. Not to say that it's not the same, but now you go, oh, maybe, shit, instead of possibly becoming the next Dylan, maybe I'll just go on The Voice and try to win the contest to, on The Voice. That's the only thing I'm worried about is yeah. that, you know, I... I we, that's their only goal is to be on American Idol. Yeah, anybody can sing. You know, anybody that's here, a lot of great fans can sing better even than the artists. But Mick Jagger and Bob Dylan and Bowie would have never made it past the first audition of The Voice or America. Madonna and Rihanna aren't yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah. But, it, they're not, but they're artists. So the idea is what I would say is like, you know, focus on being artists. You know, focus on taking over the world and, 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 and doing what you do and, and changing things. Not just winning the contest or how do I become famous or how to become whatever. It's like focus on your craft. If it's songwriting, if it's lyrics, if it's fucking guitar playing whatever it is but be great at something and 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 just be bulletproof you know what i mean and you know make, make a change don't just become a good musician like go go to make a change you know you got to have that much confidence that much ego to go like i mean you know what fuck extreme and fuck muse and fuck you know rihanna or whatever i'm going to change this shit i'm going to because that's really what it takes it takes that kind of strength that kind of belief you know Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Can't wait to see you at the Cat House Live and more from Extreme. I'm looking forward Thanks to it. Thanks again, brother. All right, rock and roll.